So hi everyone, my name is Luc. I'm a PhD student at the University of Louvain in Belgium. Uh, and I'm going to talk about a project that started uh, around three years ago at MIT uh, called Bandicoot. Are you okay, guys? Yep. Okay. <laughs> uh, so this is my phone that I carry with me every day in my pocket. Uh, and I take it when I, when, uh, when I wake up. I have with me in my pocket every day, um, every, every place I go. And if you think a bit about it, this phone knows a, bit, a, a lot about my life, a lot about my behaviors. He knows all the places I go. He knows that I went to, to London, that I stay in Brussels all the time. Uh, he knows the people I call. He knows um, people that I send texts to, for how long I call people. He knows a lot about my, my life. Um, and there's someone else who knows all the same information. It's my mobile phone provider. And mobile phone providers, they store all the metadata about your interactions. Uh, when you call someone, they store the, the fact that you call someone uh, from this cell tower during this number of time. And they were recorded for uh, business purposes during at least one year. <coughs> so researchers have been uh, working with that sort of data, which is um, very, very fine-grained data. Um, and when, when you think about uh, mobile phone metadata, um, for millions of people in a country, you can learn a lot about people's behavior. So for instance, researchers have been able to, uh, to track epidemics such as malaria or dengue. Uh, by using people's mobility with their phone as a proxy for the human mobility in the whole country. Uh, other people have been trying to uh, predict people's gender, age, or socioeconomic factors. Uh, and other people have been trying to also to predict loan repayment or to fight crimes only using uh, mobile phone metadata. And it's something that's extremely new uh, because now we have the power to use that sort of very, very uh, high dimensional data that was not uh, available before. <coughs> Uh, but we, we have kind of two issues for researchers here. The first one uh, is that it's quite sensitive data. I, you cannot go to uh, call your mobile phone provider and say, hey, I'm a PhD student uh, or researcher or practitioner. Can I access to all data about all your customers? Uh, even if you anonymize it. And it's, it's really very, very difficult to get that sort of data. Um, it takes a lot of time. Uh, and sometimes they won't give you the data. Um, and the second one is that it's even if you read a paper about someone that say uh, that with an algorithm on how they use, uh, let's see, uh, mobile phone metadata to build features and to predict something like loan repayment or uh, age of people, um, it's quite as difficult to, to like replicate the results because you don't know all the all the details of the implementation, how all the features, let's say, for machine learning were computed, and you have to guess how they were made. Um, so we design a, we 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 started to design a toolbox three years ago. What it does, it basically it takes um, files for uh, mobile phone metadata, what is called uh, CDR. So only logs of interaction, basically one line being a record with uh, this user called this number from this cell tower uh, during 30 seconds. And you have all the records in a CSV file. And what it does is that it computes a list of, of indicators. We have more than uh, 1,400 indicators currently, things like uh, entropy as a distribution of your contacts, the radius of duration, so how much you move uh, every week or every day, and it does that automatically. And you can like uh, give this toolbox um, a list of a million of users, and it will automatically compute all the features for all the users, and you can use it for machine learning after, or simply to analyze your own uh, mobility patterns. <coughs> so as I was saying, we have uh, around 1,400 features currently um, in, in a few categories. So first, uh, basic call and text interactions. So like from si very simple stuff like a number of interactions uh, to like the percentage of conversation that you respond to. Uh, also mobility features. So indicators such as the um, radius of, uh, of duration, how much you move, or um, things like number of places that you go, number of unique places. Um, and also sometimes you have access to very, very large data sets. So let's say you have 30% of the people in a country. Uh, all the people are connected to one mobile phone operator. And in this case, we not only have data about uh, individual people, but you also have links between, let's say, one third of the people in a country. So you can look at things like clustering coefficient or associativity between user. Uh, do people that text a lot uh, text to people that also text a lot? Um, and also we work with mobile phone recharges. Um, things like when people top up the mobile phone um, to analyze like the, the distribution of researchers and things like this. <coughs> um, so we tried also to design a workflow that is very easy. 
that for 95% of people do, who do the same thing, they can do in a, few, in a few lives. So basically what you do is that you load the data about one user. Uh, sometimes you want to visualize the pattern to check if there are no errors in the data. Because a lot of data that you get uh, are sometimes corrupted or faulty or some things are missing. So you want to visualize quickly um, how it looks like. And then you want to compute all the indicators, usually, uh, and use it for machine learning. Um, so this is like the very basic stuff that you can do with this toolbox. What you do here is that in one line you import the, the, the toolbox, Bandicoot. Then you read a, a CSV file uh, about all the records for one user. Uh, you compute all the features, 1,400 of them, uh, and then you, you export them in a JSON file. And in just four, them, for in just four lines, uh, you have all the features, then you can plug it, for instance, into uh, any machine learning to, uh, toolbox that you want to use after. <coughs> Uh, and I was saying, this is a, a JSON file that you can use. You can you can get so you have uh, things like reporting variables, so variables on the quality of the data. Uh, sometimes you have like bins missing data, so weeks. Let's say you have four weeks where data was missing. You would like to check that, uh, and you don't want to look at, at the original data. So we have around 40 reporting variables that you, we we output every time, and then you have the list of all the features. So for instance, here the response delay uh, for text messages. Um, so to load a file, uh, we have a function called readCSV. What it does, it basically it's, it says that uh, you want to load file, uh, the file, uh, file A from this directory of records. So you look into the directory and look for the fi a file called a.csv. Um, and then it also lo loads uh, a list of uh, location, exact location of antennas and sometimes attributes like uh, gender, age, things like this. Um, and the nice thing about, so it's, this syntax is interesting because uh, when you want to load a network, so not only one user, but also uh, uh, records about all its, all its contacts, it will automatically lo 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 look in the same directory and look for files with the name of its contacts automatically and load them if they are there. Um, and what we do after is that we not only compute indicators, um, but we divide them uh, by chunks, so every week, for instance, and we compute the indicator uh, for them, and then we uh, return aggregated statistics. So for instance, uh, if you want to, uh, to understand the duration of calls that people make, you're not only interested in knowing that the average duration is 90 seconds. You would like to have a notion of variability of the data. It is the same every week, every month. How does it change in the time? So what we do is that we divide every uh, record by, um, by weeks. So all the call duration during the first week, all the call duration during the second one. And we compute things like mean or standard deviation on that for every week. And then we aggregate this, so we will compute the mean of the mean, or the curve of this, or the skewness of the mean for every week. It gives you a lot of statistics about a distribution. All right, so I will switch to a, a small notebook just to show you how it works in practice. Sorry, can I just ask you yep. question? How do I collect data? Do you explain how we collect data from our own phone? Yes, uh, so if you want to collect data about your own phone, we have an Android app at bandicoot.mit.edu slash Android. Uh, actually, it doesn't work for iPhone because uh, Apple doesn't let you download your own uh, uh, metadata call index. You can download like sensor information, but not the logs of who you called uh, with the iPhone. Thing I last month hmm? the thing I the yeah, so you, we we have an Android phone, uh, Android app. Uh, what it does is you just have one button, and you s it sends you an email with all your uh, all your records, and you can start to visualize them, analyze them. Oh. You get yeah, you get a CSV file with all your records. Um, and I also did the same with Facebook, for instance. So I downloaded all my data from since 2008, all the text interaction with people, and I, uh, I plugged them into Bandicoot to, uh, to analyze them. And I have all the same sort of metrics and features from it. Um, so let's see, we, we, we have data for users. So I was saying it's CSV file with like type of interaction, color, color text, the direction, the call duration. Uh, and we can, we, you can also add um, data about uh, exact uh, cell tower location, so GPS location. Um, and when you load a user, so you say you want to, to read the CSV uh, about one user called Ego, it automatically like describes you uh, quickly the data. So, hey, you have uh, 300 records from this date to these days using that number of calls, and you have texts and calls so that you can really check if you, you, have, you made a mistake or not. Um, there's something that we, we had a, a couple of uh, months ago is a visualization to very quickly visualize the patterns of the data of a, of a user. 
So when you run visualization.run, it automatically uh, saves you over uh, HTTP uh, a nice visualization. So it has like a list of, of uh, indicators um, and a network also of all your contacts. And you can uh, go through all your indicators and it shows you the distribution of them, uh, either by day of the week or for all the time range. Uh, and you can also, so you can do this for your own data in two lines of code. You download it with Android, then you visualize them. Um, and you can also look at the subsample of weeks or months, depending on what you say. And you have the, the network also with uh, how much you, you contacted uh, people in your network. So this is just a, a sample user with uh, A, B, C, D, E uh, people. <laughs> All right. And you can switch to, uh, to, uh, to, so to indicators. Let's see, look at uh, uh, initiated interaction uh, or um, response rate, and you see it um, interactively. Uh, wait. Yeah. Ah. All right, sorry about that. All right, uh, so then what you can do is that, as I was saying, in one line you can compute all the features. But if you want to lo look into details, you can uh, compute them uh, directly one by one. So for instance, uh, we have uh, features, so indicators in, in two modules, individual for individual features and spatial for mobility. So if you, if you uh, compute, for instance, the percentage of uh, initiated conversation, it returns you a dictionary um, with levels of granularity. For, for instance, here it tells you that uh, for all weeks and all, all days, um, for um, taking into account both call and text, you have 32% of conversations that were initiated. Uh, and the same for other types. It's the same syntax. Uh, for number of antennas, you have on average uh, five antennas per week. Uh, radius of duration is 1.5 kilometers. You have ev all the time you have the mean as a standard deviation of the distribution. Uh, but if you look at the signature of one function, so let's say a number of active days, uh, you have a lot of more uh, options that you can activate. Uh, you have keywords like group by, interaction, summary. Um, so what does that mean? So for instance, um, uh, this is active day. So it tells you that on average you have 5.5 five, um, active days per week uh, for all the weeks of data that you add in your data set. We have a group by uh, keywords that you can change from week to month to known. Uh, so if you, if you put month, it will divide uh, automatically record by months and tell you that you have uh, 22 active days per month on average. And it, if, you, if you put it known, it will just give you all the, it will take into account the whole distribution, so not dividing by weeks. And for all the data, you have 44 days with, uh, with, with interaction, with at least one. So this is the group by uh, keyword. Uh, we have also summary keywords, uh, which gives you um, control on the granularity of the statistics that you compute. So for instance, if you look at code duration, Call duration, uh, we have two types of indicators. Indicators like active days, that just take a list of records and compute the number of active days. Or call duration, uh, call duration written, um, uh, computes call duration for each record and returns you a distribution of call duration. Uh, so either you have uh, an uh, a floating point number, either you have a distribution of floating point numbers. So in this time, it's a dis in the, for this one, it's a distribution. So you have, uh, for every week of data, you have, uh, you have the mean and the standard deviation, and on top of that, we compute the mean and standard deviation for all week. Uh, if you want more information, you can you can put a, a, a keyword summary extended, and this time you not only have mean and standard deviation, but you also have the courtesy, skewness, uh, median, mean, etc. And then you have around um, more than twelve statistics for a single indicator. Uh, and lastly, you can also uh, decide you want to, to split uh, weekend, and weekday, weekend and weekdays, or also split day and night for the same indicator. So if we look at active days, you can split them during weekend and weekday to see if you're more active during the weekend or during the, the, the weekday or at night between that days. And you can do the same, also adding summary extended to have uh, kurtosis and skewness on this. Um, and if you want to export indicators, as I was saying, we, you have just one function and you don't need to care about all that. You call the function all and you say, I want an extended summary uh, splitting uh, day and night. And it automatically computes all the features and it returns a dictionary. So, uh, with, so reporting variables, things like uh, when you load the data, uh, you ignore records because they were corrupted. 
Uh, do you have people who are missing, uh, missing in the network? Uh, and then you have the list of all the, all the features, etc. Um, and then you can export them in, um, either in JSON or CSV, uh, if you want to do this, or just use them in, in, your, in your Python code. Uh, and you export them to, um, to, to a CSV file, for instance. Um, with, and you can export uh, features about one user or just features about um, uh, dozens of users or millions of people. So for instance, here is a, a CSV file. So you have like one column being um, a, a single, um, a single features, and then you you will have uh, lines about all your all your users. All right, uh, and lastly about the code. So um, the thing that we tried to to make very easy was to extend the toolbox uh, so that you could like compute your own indicator. Let's say you want to look at the shortest call every week. Uh, so just you you define your function. Uh, it takes a list of records, um, and you compute like the call duration for each one, and you you compute the minimum. So for every uh, every every record, every list of records, uh, you will return the, the the minimum duration call duration. And what what, what we do is that we developed um, a simple decorator that will draw wrap, uh, wraps around, uh, around the function, um, and and it, it says that. Okay, give the function only call, and then divide by weeks, compute all the statistics, and call the function for every change. And automatically, so we have this function shortest call, uh, and we, when, when you give it uh, a user, it will just do what we, what we did before, uh, and return like, the statistics so with mean, so the deviation. If you want to split by day, it will split by days. Call the function for uh, every day and night, every ch for every week, and compute the statistics. So in just a few in, in just a few lines, you can define your own indicator. All right. Um, so back to the initial question. So we, we had issues with uh, other researchers. We had issues with uh, replicability of the data and, pri and privacy issues. Um, so replica uh, replicability. So basically, what we did is design a toolbox that anyone can use, um, researchers, practitioners. And it's very easy to compare the results that you got because you know which version you use of the, of the toolbox. Um, you can put the version in a paper if you want to publish it. Uh, and then anyone can look at their own data or the same data sets and compute exactly the same features. So when they, do their they, when they run their machine learning algorithms, they know that they have exactly the same features. Um, and also, uh, compared to uh, someone that does it uh, on his own and compute, let's say, 10 or 20 features, we, we had more than 10 people that work on the project during three years that did more than uh, 1,400 features. So um, it's a, a much more uh, robust project. And we also have a coverage of around 90% of the code using unit tests. We have regression tests so that every commit has to return the same features than before. Um, and also privacy. Um, what we do a lot is that when you talk to mobile phone provider, is that we give them the toolbox. They compute the features. Um, they give us attributes about people. Let's say we want to predict uh, things like socioeconomic factors. They give us the information, they give us the features, but not the individual data. And it's much more easier to, give, to get that sort of information than the raw data. And it doesn't leave their servers. Um, all right. So during the last week, we had a, a few partnerships with uh, both universities and mobile phone providers, such as uh, Orange or Telenor. Uh, and I will go through a few uh, examples of uh, collaboration that we did in our uh, research labs. So. Um, the main question when you have access to very detailed features about uh, behaviors of people using mobile phone data is what can you do with that? Uh, can you predict people's uh, behaviors? Can you predict gender, socioeconomic factors? Um, so we had a study um, around, uh, it was in 2013 by colleagues of mine. Um, we tried to predict personality of people. Basically, as I was saying, this phone knows a lot about me. Can it predict my personality or a little of it? So what we did is that we asked around 100 students at MIT. Uh, we were uh, enrolled in the program so that their data was collected using the mobile phone. So we asked them to fill uh, a survey with uh, a few dozen questions. Things like, do I see myself as someone who is talkative? Um, do, do I uh, do things efficiently? And based on that, uh, it, um, the, based on this survey, we can compute a dimension of personality. It's called the Bi uh, Big Five uh, Indicator List, and it computes uh, five dimension of personality, uh, and the, the, the research was, uh, can, we, can we predict the personality of people based on the features? So it was in 2013, 
uh, and we had uh, around 36 features at that point with Bandicoot. Uh, but um, they managed to, uh, to, to predict person personalities. So for instance, if you look at neuroticism, uh, basically uh, characteristics like fear or anxiety, uh, we can predict up to 63% neuroticism. So if you, if, you, uh, if you have a value between uh, uh, 0 and 100, we divide it in low, medium, and high, and you try to, to predict the classes um, based on the features that we had. So we, had a, we have a baseline of around 38%, and we go up to 63% uh, just by looking at the features uh, using mobile phone metadata. And again, it was a few years ago, uh, we had around yeah, 30, 36 features, so now we have a bit more, and it was around with uh, 100 students. And, and the questionnaire to determine the ground truth of the ocean. Yes, so the questionnaire is a ground truth. Yeah, it, it was the previous page, or was it uh, one of the standard? Um, no, it, it's a standard method to, uh, to, uh, to determine uh, personality of people. It gives you, so it gives you five dimensions, so neuroticism, uh, openness, agreeableness. Yeah. Uh, and so that was the questionnaire itself? Yes, that was the questionnaire, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, is yep. there a particular picture that stands out to you, like just to explain the characteristics now? Um, or they're all like? I mean, uh, they were using, um, I think, SVM for this one. Um, it, it was, yeah, basically, you, have, you had like three or four predictors that works a lot. Uh, also, for instance, for neuroticism, you have a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of balance, difference in balance between women and men. So if you divide, if I divide both, you have a lot of way, way different values. But um, then the next question was, uh, can we scale this out? So not looking at 100 people, but uh, hundreds of thousands of people, uh, what can we predict about this? So there are many, many countries, in, especially de in the developing world, where uh, you have a very uh, census, for instance, are very, very old or are missing a lot of data. So even simple questions like um, knowing the gender distribution of people in a country can be extremely useful. Um, so, so, so we looked at uh, gender, trying to predict gender of people based on mobile phone data for both uh, European and Asian countries. Um, and again, we, we, uh, we uh, using, using different uh, machine learning approach, we try to, to predict gender of people for uh, around um, 600,000 people based on Bandicoot features. Uh, and we had an accuracy of uh, around 75% uh, uh, by knowing, by training the, data, the algorithm with only uh, 5,000 to 10,000 people. Uh, and it was for the world population. Uh, if you take only tw the 25 top percent of the population, you go up to 88% uh, accuracy in knowing the gender of people uh, based only on mobile phone metadata. We give you a, a very quick and uh, almost real time, if you want, uh, information about distribution of, uh, let's say, socioeconomic factors or gender or age of people um, in countries. All right, so um, uh, it's available on the bonicoot.mit.edu, you can have a look. Um, so we work on this since three years ago. We have around uh, 6,000 lives of code with 10 contributors. So uh, if you want to, uh, to use it, if you want to contribute, feel free. Uh, so we now support Python 2 and 3. Um, yeah, thanks. <laughs> so I did just, in, yeah. So we have time for questions, so feel free to uh, ask questions. Yeah, so how, uh, you mentioned sort of feeding the data in the CSV and the other tools for if your data was in a SQL data base or other yeah. sort of. So, so basically, uh, we, we, you can, for instance, use CSV. So that's what we do with the Android app. So you can get your own data or the CSV file and easily plug it. Uh, but uh, under the hook, we have, uh, we have objects, so record objects. Uh, and you can just use your database and um, feed it to the Bandicoot toolbox and just build a list of records and analyze them directly after. So you can use for the Hadoop cluster uh, where you have all your data and, uh, and use Bandicoot for, for all individual users. Yep. So my school has had you know, the partnership with Orange. Yep. Um, I presume you know, they're, they're analyzing uh, some data. I'm just, just trying to understand where do they get the, the data from? I'm, I'm assuming they, it's not like um, they've asked sort of people to install mm -hmm. your app. I'm no. Just, just trying to understand that. Uh, so I have a slide for this one. Uh, so for the partnership with Orange, um, uh, they run a challenge uh, two times. Uh, what, what they did was uh, trying to give data, uh, so trying to give CDR data 
So the logs that al they already have uh, inside the company about metadata that they use for business people to build people at the end of the month. Um, so they have all the logs of, CD of uh, people metadata. Uh, and they, try, they, they wanted to give it to researchers uh, so that researchers could uh, work on healthcare, social development. Uh, for instance, it was in, the last one was in Senegal. So they, they give data uh, to 150 teams of researchers. Um, and the researchers try to work with the data. So they gave them um, mobility data sets and body good features. Um, and researchers had access to this um, during, I think, one year and after they published paper on what they were doing with the data. But it's only yeah, anonymized data uh, that they have from, uh, from, uh, from CDR files called detailed records. Yep. Um, one of the things you, you sometimes see for sort of developing apps um, that involve, um, say, personal data, mm -hmm. like, say, for instance, I don't know, a safety application mm -hmm. um, is a difference between the approaches of, like, Apple mm -hmm. um, and Android um, in terms of what's available. So Oh, certain features are available mm -hmm. Android only um, yeah. on the sort of mm -hmm. decision of the developers. So I was just wondering if you could kind of offer your perspective on which approach is, is better. Uh, you mean uh, other company giving the data or other developer trying to access the data? I think, I guess, the sort of basically a sort of Apple versus. Yeah. Uh, so, so basically, so we. Um, we wanted to analyze our own data, so we, uh, we started, okay, we, we're going to do apps for Android and, uh, and iPhones. So we did a, an app for, for Android that you can download your own data. Uh, you can also do it for, uh, if you have a study, let's see, with, uh, you, you, make, you make an app that, that can download the logs of call and text for people. Uh, you cannot do this with, with Apple. They, they don't give you access, uh, as a developer, to the logs of, of text and calls that you make. So it's just uh, it's just impossible with Apple currently. Uh, it was it was possible before. It's not anymore. I think. Yeah. Um, uh, and also the reason why uh, we started working in, on a very large scale CDR files uh, was that uh, if you're a researcher and you want to access data about a lot of people, uh, it scales a lot when you talk directly to a mobile phone provider uh, to get the data about all the all the customers in the country, and you directly have the data. Uh, about all the customers, and you don't need to, to run, um, let's say, uh, to, to run an experiment and give people smartphones. Uh, also, if you if you look at the uh, at, at countries in Africa, uh, where you can do a lot of uh, research, researches, for instance, for it was the same for um, um, for uh, researches, for instance, on epidemics or healthcare, social uh, um, social good. Um, usually, people don't have smartphones, and you don't you, you cannot install uh, apps on Android because they don't have Android. They have very simple phones. So if you want to, uh, to, to see where the people are going, where they're talking, uh, you need to talk to the mobile phone provider directly. Does it respond to uh, what you were? Does it show methods in this kind of library which gives you some statistics of the data? So yep. some aggregation of the data. Um, so I know that you have the PHP, so you can run you know, other libraries, you get the file and you can mesh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so basically we, we try to make it very modular. So you have function to, uh, to group records. We have function to divide by week, uh, by, by weekend. And you can, you can, do, you can look at, at, the, at, the, at the underlying function and do what you want with that, yeah. Okay, so it gives you back yeah. the raw data. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, the, yeah, the raw data. Now. Yeah, we try to document every function. So uh, we have an extensive documentation online. It should be very documented, that sort of yeah, things. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Data. So which which uh, which data do you need in order to 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 your brand to then compute all these indicators? So I guess mm -hmm. like you know, stuff about mm -hmm. calls or. Uh, so so we fo we focus on on um, on data about interaction between people. So things like text that you send to someone or uh, when you call someone during a certain number of minutes or seconds. And if you have that sort of information, uh, either so mobile phone text message, uh, just uh, a chat application, 
with a message between users. Uh, it's a sort of transactional data that you can plug into Bandicoot and write your own loader for this data. Just that uh, one user uh, send a message to this user uh, at that time or from this place is enough for, uh, for it. And you can quickly write, uh, write something to, to load the data in, uh, in Bandicoot. Uh, yeah, just uh, interesting performance. So, I mean, how does it scale to sort of really big penetration? So, so, so yeah, it's scale, uh, actually, it's, it's scale enough so that we can run for millions of people. Uh, so w when we started the project, actually, we, um, oh, we, we, uh, we partnered with uh, around at the beginning. So we, we designed the toolbox and worked on it during a few months. Then we sent them the code so that they could run on the production machine, uh, and it didn't work. It just, like, a few days after, they sent us an email, like, oh, we have a bunch of errors. So we looked into that, and actually, they were uh, using a very old version of Python, and they were not using Python. They were using uh, Jiton. I don't know if people use, here use Jiton. Uh, so it's uh, a Python version interpreted in Java. Uh, it was a very old version of Jiton, version 2.3, so that uh, you could not return uh, dictionaries from functions. Everything had to be serialized in very uh, simple uh, Python types. Uh, so that's, that's why we, so we had to fix everything and change the file. That's why we understood that it's actually quite hard to, uh, uh, to, to, to make Python code for uh, production machines. So we don't rely on things like NumPy, CPy, uh, Pandas. That could be a bit faster, uh, maybe 10 times faster. Uh, but if you do something like this, and uh, then you, you want to run it on a production machine where they don't sometimes have GCC, it's, it's not worth it, because you, you made something fast that doesn't work on the production machine. Uh, so what we do is that we have only Python, Python code. So if you want to make it fast, you can probably run it with PyPy. We have a, a good performance jump with when we <coughs> use PyPy. Uh, but we don't use uh, things like NumPy or, or Pandas. And also, we, we don't have requirements to run the toolbox. You just uh, take any Python interpreter and run, uh, run the code and automatically run everywhere. So could you, is an estimate for like in, in the order of millions of, of people? Um, would it take to calculate something like So it's, it's in order of a few hundred milliseconds per people, okay. person, so yeah. I mean, even if you have millions of people it, on, on, a, on a server, it won't take less than a few, like a few dozen hours. So, yeah, ten hours, which is okay when you, you, you when you're a researcher, you prefer the software to work without errors, bugs. It's what takes time when you develop it, and running time is not that an issue actually. Do you have um, datasets available? We we have a, we have a sample user for one user. Uh, but and we we should have some uh, yeah. yeah 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 uh, we we're thinking about adding uh, yeah data set about a few hundred people so that people can play with it uh, we we may have this in the next week some months maybe I hope so yeah um, just very quickly um, <coughs> my name is Peter Nolan I'm I've basically been working with this experimenting with this toolbox for a while um, I'm working with the UK youth homeless charity called Centerpoint they've been basically gathered trying to gather and gather statistics on the numbers and the locations of the young homeless population in Britain. Um, and they've been having very little uh, success with um, gathering traditional statistics as you gather by local authorities. The government, the ONF, has recently decertified the standard government um, methodology for, count, for rough, count, rough sleeper counts. Um, we're basically looking at this type of data basically to get not just kind of this, some some idea of the street homeless population through their kind of um, very, what could be very distinctive movements and social network patterns, but also basically a much more, much larger um, insecurely housed population, people are basically surfing between friends' sofas, moving around frequently, who aren't kind of securely housed at all. Um, so we're basically just gearing this up, you know, we're in the middle of, the, of uh, doing this, up, of seeing whether this is conceptually possible or not. So if you're interested in working with us on this, um, <laughs> Thanks for that. Um, yeah, and actually, I think it, it's it's the sort of like um, uh, research based on mobile phone data is extremely interesting now because we 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 have the we we can access that of data. And for instance, uh, we had colleagues who work with um, mobile phone data for um, millions of people, but a few millions of people, and you get a real time uh, map of what's happening in a country. Uh, people uh, managed to, to predict um, uh, very, very um, accurate census map in France 
uh, in real time, so hour by hour, how many people are in this area of the country, uh, how, people are, how many people are moving from this area to this area. And, and you, can, you can do very groundbreaking research that was not possible before. And even for very small studies, like with a few, you, you, you make a app with a few hundred people, uh, and, and you, you have a, all the data about people, all the data about people behaviors, and you, you, can, you can do like studies to predict people's happiness, people's personality, uh, just based on the mobile phone, something that is not intrusive at all. It's just data that is here available, yeah. You had a, you had a question? Okay. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks a lot. <laughs>